Well, it turns out we did get a little bit more snow overnight. Still, nothing crazy, but it was a really pretty sight to wake up to this morning. And in typical Michigan fashion, by the time I came out to work after lunchtime, it had all melted away. So I don't have any excuse not to be out here working. I would say at this point, I'm about 50% done with this garden. Now, I do have some trees that really need to be planted, and I kind of want to start planting them today at the very least, but I am going to do a little bit in this space first. I don't feel up to tackling the spigot area with all my random pots and this broken well cover. I just am not up to it. I'm going to tackle this fence line that has another patch of corn. It just seems a little bit more doable. I think it's looking really good in here though. I'm like so, so happy with the progress that we've made so far. There's definitely still a lot to be tackled. Two more rows of tomatoes to be specific, but at least they're not cherry tomatoes. I have one row over here next to the strawberries. All these two rows along the north fence line of strawberries. And then there are four rows on this side from kind of that flagpole to the other raised beds. So we're getting there. But going to start on these corn stalks. And I want to talk about some of the negative aspects of growing in landscape fabric. I mentioned when I was setting up my greenhouse how I love landscape fabric, and I do, but nothing is perfect. No decision in gardening or really in life comes without pros and cons, and I think it's important to know both kind of sides when you're making a decision so that you can kind of weigh them for yourself in your own circumstance. Now, this bed in my garden is a bed that I have admittedly not maintained well any of the years that we've been here. This was my fourth growing season here. So that plays a big factor in the weed pressure because the longer you maintain a bed well and don't let weeds go to sea, the less the weed pressure. And so I had that going against me and that's part of the reason why I decided to put landscape fabric down. But even then, I think because I just had holes that were so closely together and because it didn't quite reach the fence line, so I had weeds creeping in at the very edge of the fence line, I just, I got a lot of weeds that came not through the fabric, but through the holes where the corn itself was growing. So I'm taking the fabric off of this bed. I'm gonna mulch it super deeply. I'm going to manage this bed well next year. And honestly, I'm not sure that I'm sold on the idea of growing corn in fabric as a whole. So we'll see if I do that again or not next year. But now that I have that row done, I'm finally gonna start planting some of these trees. I just need something different outside of the main garden. And I have about 40 trees, I think, that I picked up in the middle of summer that really need to go on the ground. There's a couple Chinese chestnuts from a friend, and then the majority of the rest of them are actually with the intention of being tree fodder. So there's some willows, a lot of willows. There is uh, some white mulberries, and if you don't know what tree fodder is, I highly recommend looking up Nick Ferguson. We took a class or a workshop this summer that he taught that talked about tree fodder, which is basically growing trees for the purpose of animal feed. And it was awesome. Like super, super fascinating. The protein content of some of these trees is like, near 20% and it's something that we can do small scale whereas we can't do like hay production as a supplemental animal feed. So I am going to put one row of these trees in kind of in our barnyard area along the fence line and we'll just see how it goes. I'm not an expert I'm just it's something new that we are learning 
And basically, I am going to be putting these probably four feet apart or so, which would be really close if you were just planting them as trees. But the purpose of them is that you actually are only going to let them grow to be a few feet high, and then you're going to cut them off repeatedly copus coppicing i think it's coppicing but it's never going to grow to be like a full tree it's just going to be kind of this constant flow of shoots coming off of it so they can be more densely planted together so putting them along this fence line will be an easy spot to kind of keep an eye on them without them being in the way and the nice thing about having livestock guardian dogs is that we do not have to worry about deer coming and getting any little saplings. However, we do have to worry about the dogs getting them. <laughs> they love to gnaw and jump on new trees, unfortunately. So we're just using this extra fencing to give them simple little cages. This also will just make us remember where they are so that we don't accidentally mow over them. But in the springtime, I may redo this. I'm just trying to get them in the ground, trying to get them protected so that they don't end up getting killed by my neglect. So little cages with stakes for now will hopefully be good enough and we will see next spring how they fare. Overall though, I think this will be a pretty fun addition to our small footprint homestead if it ends up working out. I think we did about 10 trees today, so we still have a lot more to go, but those are going to have to wait for another day. I know some people are wondering when I'm going to start tackling more in the big crop garden, and believe me, it's on my mind. However, I'm trying to be mindful of my priorities and my manpower. This is a big project, though it's a fairly simple project, but it's just something that would be smarter to do on maybe like a weekend when Tommy's off work and we can have all hands on deck because we're gonna have to roll out a lot of landscape fabric and move a lot of wood chips. And typically I'm working during the day with either all of the kids or some of the kids. So, there's only so much I can do. It's on the list. We will see if we get to it. If I had to choose between having the garden, the main garden completely done or having the main garden halfway done and the crop garden halfway done, I'd rather have one area be like completely finished. It would just make my mind more at ease. And I know that when springtime comes, I would be happier with that scenario overall. So we are on day 12, I believe it is, of 30 days was my goal. So we still have time. I don't think that the weather is going to cut me out before then. I'm just going to kind of keep focusing on the one area that I'm in. So yeah, I think that's all for today. I love hearing your guys' progress in the comments. I love to see your progress when you tag me on Instagram. And I truly, truly do appreciate your guys' accountability and for sticking with me this month, even though it seems like I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over again. But I appreciate you guys and um, happy to have you here with me. I will talk to you tomorrow.